In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of the solving method that we're going to use for the 5x5 cube, as well as teach you a little bit more about the structure of the 5x5 and an, a bit of extra notation. So as you'll remember from solving a 4x4 cube, essentially we reduce it to a 3x3 state by solving the center pieces and then pairing up our edge pieces. And essentially we'll be doing the same sort of thing on a 5x5. So we're going to be solving the center pieces and then pairing up our edges using what's known as the reduction method. Unlike on a 4x4 cube, the 5x5 cube actually has fixed centers like a 3x3. So if we look at this cube, the middle sticker here, the white sticker denotes the color of the side. Similarly, the blue sticker here denotes that this side will be blue, unlike on the 4x4 cube where there are no fixed center pieces. So you don't really know, or you have to uh, solve the centers yourself. Uh, the center pieces are fixed on a 5x5 cube. So because a 5x5 cube has one additional layer, there are more and different types of pieces on this cube as compared to the 4x4 and the 3x3. So on the 4x4 cube, with the center pieces, all the center pieces can be treated as exactly the same type of piece. So that is to say, this one can be swapped with this one, this one can be swapped with this one, and uh, and so on. So these center pieces can all be treated as exactly the same. However, on a 5x5, five five, there are essentially three different types of center pieces. So there's the middle one, which denotes the color of the side, and that one is fixed. So we don't need to worry too much about that. However, in addition to this middle one, we have two different types of uh, center pieces. So there's the corner centers, which are these ones that lie in the corner around here, the, in the corners around here. And then we have the edge center pieces, which lie, I guess, at the edge positions. So forming the cross are the edge centers. And then on the outside, we have the corner centers. And these all join together to make the three by three uh, full center. So it's three by three, like that. So you need to note that these edge centers can't go into the position of a corner center. So if we try to move this edge center, say up here, by doing a U move like that, it will only move from there to there. So from an edge position to an edge position there. So like how on a three by three edges can't be moved to the position of a corner, it's the same thing on these five by five centers. So doing a rotation like that just moves the corners around once and same with the edges. So after solving all of our center pieces, we need to then solve the edge pieces. Now on a four by four, there were just two edge pieces that we needed to pair up together. However, on a five by five with the additional layer, we need to pair three edges up together. And there are two different, I guess, types of edges that we need to be aware of. So we have the middle edges, which are known as midges. So that's the ones in the middle. And then we have the wings. So these two are the wings around the middle edge. So after we solve all of our center pieces and then pair up all of our edge pieces, we may encounter what's known as edge parity, but I'll describe that in the tutorial videos. After that, we will have reduced the cube to a simple three by three state. So we go on and simply solve it as if it were a three by three. Unlike on a four by four cube, we won't actually encounter any parities during our three by three stage. The only addition to our notation set is that we need to be able to describe turning three layers as opposed to just two. So turning two layers is the same as if it were on a four by four cube, it's just R wide, so RW. However, if we want to turn three layers, all we do is put a three in front of that. So that's three RW, like that. In the following videos in this module, I'm going to teach you how to solve the five by five using this method, the reduction method, by solving our center pieces, pairing up our edge pieces, and then solving the cube as if it were a three by three.